The message of today is called, I had a hard time uh, trying to put a name to it, but I thank God he's worthy. Uh, the message is called, Molded by My Father. We are celebrating the Father who has done exceptionally, wonderfully well in our lives. Last Sunday we were not here with Pastor Fred, but this Sunday we're here and we want to celebrate God uh, for what he has done in our lives, for the many fathers who have done a good job in our lives. And I, as an individual, have been molded by my Father God. He has molded me. You've seen the picture. And he has much more than what the picture says. There is many things that God has done. And I want to share a few things in this journey that will encourage you that your father is not, is not, is not, is not hidden somewhere. Your father is not careless. Your father is very mindful of you in all the things that you think he might not be mindful of. Amen? Amen. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter, chapter 12, and we'll start from verse 1. I have the New King James Version. That's the version I normally use. That's the Bible that I have, and I have other versions, but that's one that I use a lot. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Praise Jesus. Normally, when we think of what God is planning to do in our lives, we do not believe in the things that he's saying because they're so big and they're so unimaginable that our current circumstances cannot contain what he's about to do. We read the Bible and we look at it and we say, how is this possible? How can it be? Now, Abraham is one of the few people who is... I think, I, I love that they call him the father of faith. He's one of the few people that he stole. Back then, you're 70, I think you're a young man. Young man, rise up and do what? And go to a land that I will show you. Normally, you think about, we, we think about, ah, si alikuwa Abraham, si, 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 si alikuwa, si, al, si alisikia sauti ya mungu, like from, from an echo somewhere there, Abraham, rise, go to the country. That's what, that's, yeah, that's what we see in the movies, right? But even today, we still hear the voice of God. Like he did, you know? And how many of us take the time to run and do what it says, you know? Today, we, we bless the Lord. Abraham did not have a Bible, but we have the written voice of God that speaks profoundly. So what happens is that Abraham hears this voice and he knows, we do not know how long it takes to make a decision but I believe he had to tell his father, I'm leaving. He had to go to his uncles and aunties and his people and say, hey, I'm leaving. And I'm leaving to a land. And everybody would see him and say, ah, man, that is crazy. Which land? He doesn't know. Where? He doesn't know. You know? And his, and his cousin, Lord, thought, hey, man, I'm, I'm into an adventure. Let me hook up with my brother and go. And he went. And I believe they had a good relationship. Maybe they were best of friends. Maybe because you can't just go on with somebody you do not know. But the, the concept, the thing is, Abraham heard the voice of God. Heard the voice of God. And he accepted it. And he believed it. And he started walking and following God. Now, to, to one of the very things that God will do and has done in this age is that he has placed the Holy Spirit as a voice inside of you. So that you can hear, when you hear the voice of God, the Bible says, and you will hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way. It's written in Isaiah. This is the way, walk in it. God has not left any. He's a good father. He has not left anyone alone. He has made direction for you, praise Jesus. God is walking and he's always saying something to you. It's you to hear and obey. 
The Bible says those who obey will eat the fruits of the land. Praise the Lord Jesus. See, God is mindful of us in such a way he has never left us. If I think of the years that have gone by, that, that time when I was in there, I did not think it was possible for me to get where I am today. I had imagined it. I had thought of it. I had envisioned that I would be this, but I would not. I, it, it, my mind, I was looking at the plate. I was praying for God for a thousand shillings. And I was praying, God, please, just 1,000, just a fair. One day I woke up, I remember, and I told God, I'm going to church. And I dressed up. I got no money. I did not have any penny in my pocket. And I, I dressed up. I, 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 I did everything possible. And I told God, I'm going. I'm going to church. No money. Hallelujah. I walked, I walked. By the moment I'm getting next to the bus stop, I met this little guy who was sitting around, and he gave me 1,000, told me, Dennis, uh, well, you, you're good, good. I said, when I'm up in the church, okay, here now. I was like, hmm, blessed is the Lord God. I praise the Lord for that day. Now, you understand, God is always speaking. If God was not speaking to me, hey, go to church, do this, do this. You know, if God was not with me, I would not have made it that way. That's the first step. We, that's where we begin. I believe all of you are born again in a way. And if you're not, we will get born again today. I know that every single child of God hears the voice of God. Now to obey is you. Because God knows the Luo. He knows the Chaga. He knows the Kuria. He knows everybody in his own uniqueness. So if you cannot speak English, God will speak Luo to you. If you cannot speak the way, uh, the way, uh, 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 the way Mebolili hears, he won't. He will let you go. He will bring you to where you you can you can understand. There are people who listen to hip hop and they say, "What are these guys singing?" But when Alandre listens to hip hop, he says, "Glory be to Jesus." You've got to understand that God speaks with you. That that is the foundation of our lives in Christianity. If you do not believe that, then I, I, you will have a hard time walking this walk. Because salvation and walking with God and knowing him as your father requires you to understand, to hear his voice. The Bible says, Jesus says unto his disciples, my sheep hear my voice. Why? Because every sheep of God, every child of God, every child of God knows that his, his voice, knows the voice of God. My children, if they're acting naughty, the moment I open the door and I start walking, they know, mm, it's amazing. They know, they know. If I speak, they know this is, this is daddy speaking. So you've got to understand that is the foundation. That is the foundation. When Jesus was leaving the earth, he told his disciples, hey, listen, I have to go. Because if I don't go, the gift that my father has promised will not come to you. The gift, the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, child of God, that Holy Spirit, he's the one that speaks the voice of God in you. You don't need to hear it somewhere. You do not need to go far off country to hear it. You do not need to go to Jerusalem to hear it. You just need to understand, to pay attention to what he's saying. And the written voice of God is here. You see, it's amazing when Jesus said, I will not leave you childless. I will not leave you alone. The word was written. He made sure that in this age from mine, I will leave them with my word. And this word will be there to carry you. You will read it day and night. You will have it all the time to instruct you, to teach you. That is number one. The voice of God. Listening to it. Abraham listened to that voice. The voice of God. He understood it. The rest of the things to come is because he heard the voice. If Abraham on that particular day did not listen or hear the voice of God and obey it, I believe there will not be an Abraham in the Bible. There would be somebody else, somebody else written in the Bible. But because he heard and he obeyed, then there is. I'll give you a short testimony of my salvation. This is how I got born again. I do not know how it came about, but it came about like this. I was sitting uh, with a friend of mine who later on I discovered is my brother-in-law, literally my wife's younger brother. My, my, literally my wife's uh, cousin, not younger brother, cousin. 
And uh, on that particular day, we were in, in, in camp. Uh, Sendokas have, have this culture of taking people to camp before they enroll you into the school. So in camp, they pray for you, they, they, they preach for you. They, it's like a baptism of fire before you get into <laughs> So it is only the word prayer, the word prayer, the word prayer and eating. That's the only thing you do from morning to evening, from morning to evening. So the, the, the last day, they always give it at the day of salvation. You, they call an altar call. So the, the, the tables were arranged like some like this. So for me to go to the front, I would have to tell the friend of mine who was beside me on my right hand, hey, stand up, let me pass and go. And uh, when the preacher was calling, the, making the altar call, I told him, hey, bro, you're going. And he said, nah, man, I'm not going because uh, these people, when they get to school, they are the same people. They are backbiters, they are liars, they are stealers, they are cheaters, and, and all that stuff. So why should I go? I'm already a good person. And you? I took to his point. I said, ah, I'm not going as well. <laughs> so I, I sat. But a few minutes later, so out of respect, eh? I was not a, I, was, I, I, I respect God, in, even back then. So I just bowed down my head, and he bowed down his head, and we were there, just letting time pass by, and we go back to school. So after a few minutes of my uh, bowing down, I hear this voice just right here in front of me. We are still calling you. He says, if you want to get born again, I'm hearing it right here. And I'm saying, God, no, why is this guy speaking right here? <laughs> and yeah, on my face. And then I say, let me open my eyes. And then I open my eyes. I find myself right there in front, standing next to the, all those people who are getting born again. Yes, I, that's the truth. And then when, 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 when I, when I, when I, when I, uh, when I looked, I, what I remember that day, it is January 11, 2014. When I, when I turned around, when I turned around, I saw my friend sit in the exact same way we, we, we sat. And I, 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 I actually never, I, I said, ah, bana, these things, just say the words and go back. Why was the issue? But from that very day, I could not do certain things the way I did them before. From that very day, I, it has been up and down. But from that very day, I embraced God. Praise Jesus. So the voice of God is the foundation of everything. You hear that word. Put it in you. That word of God, that voice of God, Abraham heard it, and it changed his life. Amen? Amen? Now, I know a father who has molded and guided me and sustained my life, and that is what he does till today. In John chapter 16, let's check John chapter 16, verse 5 to 11. John chapter 16, verse 5 to 11. says, but now I go away to him. This is what I was telling you about. Uh, to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Uh, let's go. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is not to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come. But if I depart, I will send him. Praise Jesus. Uh, in the book of Zechariah chapter 6, in verse 10, the Bible says, who dares despises the days of humble beginning? God speaks to us when we are yet so not worthy of anything. Nobody in that time, not even his father, knew Abraham would be who, that, that kind of person. But the father in heaven had already orchestrated a divine plan to make him grow. That, that, that plan was just beginning by him hearing that voice of God. Number two, uh, in Genesis chapter 13, uh, in Genesis chapter 13, Abraham encounters a little bit of a challenge with his brother Lot. And Abraham said unto Lot, verse 8, Abraham said unto Lot, he said, Please let there be no strife between you and me, 
my herdsman and your herdsman, for we are brethren. It is not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If you take the left, I will, take, I will go to the right. If you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And, let, and Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered. Everything before the Lord destroyed Sodom, everything before the Lord destroyed Sodom and, and Gomorrah, like garden of the land of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. As you go towards Zohar, the Lord, then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and tearful against the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now, you, 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 you've heard the word of God. You've heard the voice of God. You know what God speaks. You've started the journey of walking with the Father. You've started the journey of enjoying his presence, his company, and knowing what he wants for you. He's, you've, you've gone through this, that he has told you this place, I will bless you. He has told you that. You know the scriptures. You, you, you understand that there is the, this thing that God is about to do. So I also, in the journey, came to a point of understanding that I needed to know what God clearly, specifically speaks about certain things in my life. Because a Christian cannot just do. A Christian has to be able to differentiate between what is good and what is better. What is best and what is better. Praise Jesus. So in the process of this, Abraham comes to an encounter. And they have a land. The Bible writes, it is as the, the Sodom and Gomorrah was like the Eden, the, God, God's, the Lord's garden. It was beautiful. If, if I was Abraham, I would have said, no, 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 Lord, you go, go this side. First of all, I brought you to this place, to this journey. I am, I am older than you. You go this side and I will go this side. And the Lord has promised me and not you, right? Physicalize, that's what it says. So when I traveled with uh, Pastor Fred, I, I, I talked to him about uh, how I came to Da. So when I entered university for the first time, uh, in the middle, I did an exam for somebody. I did an exam for this person, and I was kicked out of university. Then I was like, hey, God, I, I employed a lawyer. I did all, and amazingly, the principal was a cousin, cousin of my father, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you, I told my dad, go. That's the first time I, told, I went to my dad crying. I was a big man already, but crying. I went to my dad, I told him, my Baba, I've been chased from university. My dad, I love my father. My dad looked at me that day, like probably most fathers do, and he said, Women only, a cousin. <laughs> Go sort the situation. He did not do a thing. He, he was at work. He just looked at me and said, You're a man. Go handle it. I, I rubbed off my tears. I got out of there so powerful, so mighty, I thought I would win the case. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, I didn't. I didn't win the case. I was kicked out of university. And at the last minute, I went to my dad. I told him, you know, you could have sought the situation. So and so is your cousin. Why didn't you even go talk to him? And my dad, imagine the last... Uh, uh, in the last minute, he goes to the guy. After everything is in a mess, he t says to the guy, so how can we help this child? And the guy tells him, you know, uh, we, I don't think you can help him because the situation has, all, has escalated beyond my, my ability, my hand, I, my control. I can't do a thing about it. I look at my dad. I say, hey, man, why couldn't you help? But I did not know God has mysteriously crafted everything for my good. You know? So I looked and I was like, ah. And, 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 and I remember the, the rector, he called me into his office and he said, young man, you are the, what, what are they called, those students who, the first in the faculty? Best student, yes. You're the best student in our, in our, in our, in, in this, in your course. What, what, what happened to you? What, what are you doing? Because by that time, I knew my life was going to be in Arusha. I'd already started working for Zantel. 
uh, in in my spare time i had started i was working i had, i i worked for world vision at at, at at for a time i had a contract which was the best contract so i was really working hard to build my life in arusha and everything happened in arusha and abruptly i have to leave all these things behind and come to da because I applied for universities both here and out of the country because I knew hey, I can go out of the country if my dad says yes. So I applied for one in Kenya, which m the friend of mine also applied and got and told me, let's go, this university is good. So long story short is my dad refused the university in Kenya and said, I want you to study here in Tanzania. And the rector called me into his office and he wrote a recommendation letter on his own and told me, you go with this. So by the time I sent it to Kampala, they didn't even have anything to argue about. They ag agreed to it and I joined in the middle of, 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 the, of the course. When I, uh, when I came here, I hated the, the idea of me being here. First of all, a few months later, my, my dad called me and said, young man, you're already an old man right now. So you handle your business. I understood what that means. Means I'm cut off. And I say, I, I'm, I'm very strong. I, I, I'm very strong-willed. The only time I cry is when I preach about the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just say, Saonze, Asante, Mungo Kubariki. That's all. It ended there. I don't, I don't hate my father for it, by the way. I love him for it. It, it, is, it is a good thing he did for me. So it was now me to discover how to run and support my life. Glory be to Jesus. Abraham was faced with a similar kind of situation, choosing the desert over the Lord's garden. He was faced with such a situation. But now when you're faced with such a situation, what do you do? What do you do in life? We look back to our father, the God who molded, who creates us, who shapes us. He's an amazing God. In the midst of the desert, he will make something new out of you. God will send you to a bad place, not because he wants you destroyed, but because he wants to build character and strength out of you. Our God, our Father, we as fathers, I'm a father, we, we, we punish our children, we, we deny certain things out of them, we do not give them, and our children look to us and they think that ah, these fathers are the meanest. But the reality is we are seeing something better for them, so we have to squeeze them right now so that they can achieve something better for themselves. You see, God was looking unto Abraham, and if he would have taken him to Sodom and Gomorrah, so Abraham would say, hey, you know, this land is good and everything, and maybe he would have also done what Sodom and Gomorrah did, because that's, that's what they used. They worshipped idols, they did all that, and their land was beautiful, they were living better, they were enjoying, but God took him to a place where the only dependent help was God. In that point, I remember every that from that very day, every point of my need, every point of my trouble, the first person I turn to, I turn to God. It has taught me, God has molded me, has created a character where if I am in need, I turn to God. See, God wants his children like you and me, that we know that he is our father. He is a father that he does not mind any situation you are in. Even if you've messed up a thousand times, you can turn back and look unto him. When the difficulties are so difficult for you, turn back and look to him because he's a good God. Abraham was faced with that situation. And Lord, not knowing, not seeing the spiritual world, not knowing what the idea and the plans of God, Lord left and went to Sodom. But remember, Abraham had heard. And in the process, God has already told him, he has had a journey and he has made altars and, and God has told him, this land, when you look at the land, it is not fruitful. When you look at the land, it's semi-arid, semi-desert. I was, I was looking into this teaching concerning uh, Psalms 23 and uh, the guy was trying to bring it into reality. 
that when people say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be one. He causes me to lie in green pastures. And people think, oh, green pastures. And it's so green. And the grasses, you know those grasses you go to, you, if you lie like this, you feel like, ah. Yes, there's a sponge somewhere there. People think of that. Actually, I also used to think of that. Then I looked at this, uh, this preacher who was trying to illustrate in a real vivid way. In Israel, the green pastures are not so green. They are rocky. There's rocks everywhere. It's semi-arid. So the only green thing you have is when the, they say they get the wind blows. When the wind blows, it brings out moisture. And, and that moisture covers the land. And the, and the little, little grasses grow just beside the, 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 the rock. And so the sheep, when they go to eat, that's, that's where the shepherd takes them. And they eat one by one by one. And you think, green pastures. <laughs> green pastures. So uh, Abraham looked at this land, and in his mind he's saying, Lord have mercy. This place is not bearing fruits. This place is bad in all manner of ways. This place is just dry. This place is, and the Lord saying, this is the land I will give to you and your descendants. Praise Jesus. God brings us. God has a promise for you as a child of God. And he has, you've heard, you've gotten born again. I'm encouraging a Christian right now. You've received Jesus Christ. And the moment you after you've received Jesus Christ, God, there's amazing grace to those who are born again, newly born again. It's like God favors them the most. Praise be Jesus if you just get born again today. Go pray a very difficult prayer tomorrow. Because somehow, somewhere, the Lord will provide. But it's so amazing, we never pray for difficult things. We, we always pray for small, small things. But when those small, small things you pray, say, God, I need a new pair of shoes. Your uncle calls you and boom, the shoes. I go, everything just falls in line. And you say, hey, God, we are praying. Ha. Give yourself time. And the Lord takes you. Ah. The Lord takes you in the school of hard knocks. And you realize, hallelujah. You go in your room. You shunder from morning to evening. And then the Lord comes and says, my grace is sufficient. He goes back. And you're like, ah, God, Father, what? Where? And he's, he's telling you, I have, there you're thin like me back then in the days. And I'm looking at Pastor Fred back then. I'm looking at Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred is always laughing at me. He says, Dennis, 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 you, you used to say you want to be like me. Now weight is an issue. Well, hallelujah. He laughs. So, you look and you say, ah, God has promised you great things, amazing things. You're like Abraham. You think, but most of us look at these people in the Bible and we think, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. they're not human beings. Ah, they, they were not, come on. They were special. They were, they were not made in Eden. They were made in heaven and dropped down. We, 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 but, but the reality is the human being, look at Elijah. Elijah, this guy does wonderful things. And then at one moment, he's the one running. So Ab Abraham was there. And he's telling his brother, you know me, I don't want to fight with you. You choose the right and I'll go to the left. But the left, it is terrible. It is nothing pleasing. You get into a point as a believer when that happens. You've got to remember. You've got to remember. You've got to remember where God, the voice you heard, you've got to believe in him. Because I tell you the truth, at one point I would have failed. I would have quitted if it was not for the loving God who has sent me. It was not for the loving God who has brought me. It is the loving God who has sustained everything that is in my life today. And it is the loving God that will sustain everything in your life and bring it to accomplishment. It is that God that we serve. No, Abraham by that time did not see a thing. And by the way, he, he, he did not even have a child. He's, he's, he, 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 got, he goes to Egypt. He becomes blessed by the king of Egypt. And, and, and yet the blessings just, you know, everything keeps on piling up. But no child. And then the Lord has already promised. By that time, the Lord has already promised, I will bless you. Right? 
this is the man that God, when he first, even most of us, even we don't hear, I will bless you, your descendants will be blessed. No, this guy, the first thing God says, I will bless you and all the earth will be blessed through you. You know, and everybody who curses you will be cursed. You know, he, so this guy would go out of his home like his voice, his chest is here. Because you know, you curse, come, curse, <laughs> curse, try, curse, you curse, you see. And the moment he leaves, he leaves his brother and the land that God has brought him, Canaan. Guys, truth be told, Tanzania is a much, much better country in terms of uh, natural resources than Israel. Way, way far. You, you do not compare Tanzania with Israel. And then that is the land that God says it's flowing with honey. And honey. Now you go and see what they have done. And then you will say, Baba, jinalakoli to kuzwe. Abraham could not even imagine these things. But God had told him, this you, he will become. Now we, we, we go to God. We go to God and we see these things. We should remember. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things are edifying. A Christian in the service, in the mentorship, when the Lord is molding you, you have to get to this point. You get to this point, and Abraham got to this point. He knew that, look, here, that land is good, yes. But I have a promise here. Praise Jesus. You see, you look at your friend, the way they are doing businesses, and the way they were acting, the way they are carrying themselves, the way they are dressing, the way they are living their lives, the way they, were, they are carrying themselves around town. That's, it might be good, but not good for you. Because you know what God has called you to. You know where God is leading you to. As a believer, as a Christian, as a person following the Lord, as a person being molded by the great father, the king of kings, the everlasting father, as a person being molded, you ought to understand. You, you will be ready to choose a desert and not a good land because that's where the promise of God lies. You will be willing to go through the valley of the shadow of whatever it may be. Be because you know at the end of the day that's where the promise lies. Jesus understood this. That's why the Bible says of him that seeing the joy laid ahead he said I will go through that cross and you as a believer, you as a child of God need to properly with all your understanding if everything understand this that if God says you're blessed it does not matter what your pocket says because your pocket is in your pocket and God is all over he is mighty he will take you through it he will bless you if he says he will say if he says then that's it most people want to contemplate and negotiate and go through the scriptures and say, you know, but, 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 but what? It is written, I am blessed. Final. Does not matter anything else. And, 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 and Abraham understood that. He understood the look here. I am blessed. Does not matter where. If I go to the desert, that desert is blessed as well. If I go to any place, that place is blessed as well. Why? Because he is being molded. He knows I might go through this, but I know at the end of the day, I will be strong. Praise Jesus. In Zechariah, in Isaiah, in Zechariah, Zechariah is told, uh, uh, is told, do not despise the humble beginnings. Who are you, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? Because why? Because they, they were at a point of, of, they had given up. They're in slavery. And here comes Zechariah prophesying of, of going back home, prophesying of, of all these great and mighty things that the Lord has done. And God had to make a point. He says, do not despise humble beginnings. It does not matter where you are right now. The promises of the Lord are yes and amen. They never change, no matter what you go through. They never change. When you go through a point, consider it all joy. The Lord is making character out of you. There are things that I've gone through. There are people that I've seen. If the Lord was not for me, I would not be where I am today. 
I have surpassed those. People look at me and say, how do you make it? I smile and I say, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Because it's Jesus who sustains my life. I, like Abraham, many times, not once, not twice, many times, have been faced with a situation where I ought to choose the promises of the Lord or the ways of men. And the ways of men are very short. They're very short. They don't go far. But the ways of the Lord are everlasting. They're eternal. They have not changed. Let me tell you something. Tell me a person. No. Tell me when have you seen God fail. Tell me one person that has testified that God has failed. Tell me where God has failed. The devil is still the same devil failure every day. But God is still the same God winner, victor every day. He has not failed. He has never failed. He will never fail. He's a God worthy to be worshipped and trusted. He's a God so worthy of everything. If you, if you go to read what God does in the lives of people, it is amazing what he does. It is amazing. If I, I, I tell people, listen, some of you here, if you look at my past and my present, I would say I'm, I'm the least qualified to be married. Truth be told, one day I was talking to Pastor Fred and he was, we, we love talking, uh, me and him talk, and we love talking about our past and our present and our future. So we were laughing and he, he told me, mm, hey, Dennis, back then you had faith upon TK, but the real realistic the, I was believing with you, but the statistics <laughs> were not in your favor. The statistics were not in your favor. Now, uh, back then I was with him and I used to think he believes, yeah, you know, in which he did believe. But if he would have said that statement back then, I would have been completely, completely utterly destroyed. <laughs> And I laughed and I, I went home and I told my wife about it and she laughed, we laughed about it. Because the reality, I was not in favor. I was the least. I have a business, I'm the least qualified to run my business. I'm the least qualified to have the dreams that I have. I've traveled here and there, glory to Jesus. I'm the least qualified to have done that. It is by divine grace. I, I, had, I have completely nothing to defend myself. And say, ah, I'm the least qualified. I'm the least qualified. But the Lord is faithful. He is the one who justifies the ungodly by faith through Christ Jesus. Who, who am I? God, if it's not for God, if it's not for Jesus, who am I? If it's not for Jesus, where would I be? If it's not for Jesus, I can assure you, the Lord is faithful to carry you through. The dreams, the visions, the things that God has placed inside of you. He's a good father. He's molding you even right now for a greater tomorrow. The Bible says the glory of the latter church shall be greater. I tell my children, you are wiser than I am. You are better than I am. The, the standards of excellency and the things that you will do are better than I am. Because I don't want them to grow up and want to be like daddy. I want you to be more than daddy. So that by the time I'm old and gray, they are better off. Better off. Whatever they decide to do. My, my son believes he's, he's a musician. So he, he, you remember that that. But mama did something. This guy now right here, he has one song written. Today, he gave me something. He said something that I loved. And I say, I have told him to, that the spirit of God speaks to him. And I, I nature him to understand that. Because it is very important for even our children uh, to know that God speaks to them. So I told him, I told him this. I, when we have Bible studies, me and him, we, we have Bible studies, me and him, men to men. <laughs> so... So I told him that the Spirit of God speaks to you. So today morning he comes up in the car and he, he says, Daddy, Daddy, 
I have uh, the Spirit of God spoke to me today, and I say, mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I do listen to his level. The Spirit of God wants say, You son of God, I've called you. No, the Spirit of God will speak to him about the things in his level, just like as he would speak to you the things in your level. So, to my understanding, I would laugh sometimes about those things, but I would appreciate that God takes care and mindful to speak to him about those things. Now, the Spirit of God says to him, the name of a song that you're next going to write is called, You Have... Where is, where is Bernard? Is Ethan here? No. The, 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 if I make a mistake, I hope he will one day forgive me for this. The Spirit of God told him that the song that he's going to write next, the name of the song is going to be, You Have a Space. Now I'm like, okay. That is totally Holy Ghost-like. I have a space in heaven. I have a space in his heart. Uh, whatever, how can you put it? I thought of it and I said, oh, that is Holy Ghost-like. You know, however he will communicate it to him, that's how. It, and, and you have to know that you have to believe for greater things tomorrow. You have to believe. God is not going to take you from, from glory down down. No. That is a lie. The Bible says the 24 elders, they go up and down. And one of the mysteries is whenever they go, they come up, they see hallelujah, different glory. You want to see the glory of God, how, how, how deep it is? Look at every human being. There's never a repetitive face. And yet we all carry the glory of God in our all uniqueness. God is so amazing that he will take you from right where you are to another level, to another level. You see Abraham, he's, he's written all over the Bible, all over the Bible. He speaks about him. Jesus speaks about him. All everybody has to speak about him. Why? Because he heard God, he obeyed him, and he, he was willing to go through uh, the semi-arid land to stay there to wait for the promises and the purposes of God to be fulfilled in his life. As a believer, as a person called desiring God, as a person looking unto God, do not forget. Make sure you know how to discern what God is, is speaking to you at that time, what is good and what is bad on this earth. Make sure you know, because on that day, Abraham needed discernment to choose whether to go with Lot or to go with who? To go to the desert. And he decided to go to the semi-arid land. And the Lord blessed him. The other thing I want to speak about is in chapter 13. When you read verse 14, it says, And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through, it, through, through its length. And it's with, for I give it to you. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. It's amazing what God does. God told him, arise, see, see. One of the most difficult things we face in our, in our current age is focus. Is being able to see and maintain the vision that God has given to you as a believer, as a person of God, the things that God has spoken to you, the things that you feel bubbling within you that God is calling you to do, the promises that God has set for you. We all have our different callings in life. We all have our different things that God has spoken to us and that we need to see manifest in our lives. The one thing that we have that is such, such a big challenge is maintaining that focus on the promises of the Lord over your life. Why? Because every day there is a new thing being invented. Every day. So one day I sat down and said, God, do you really want me to do this business? Because ah, people are coming up with, 
I, 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 I traveled to South Africa and I went to visit these companies, printing companies, businesses. And uh, this lady was so kind enough to take me through the factory and uh, all the machine and what they do and all this. And uh, I visited a couple of stores and a couple of businesses and I was speechless. I'm the, this, the one this lady v took me through, they were so neat, so advanced. It was just mind blowing. And I'm saying, this is South Africa. Sasa nikienda Europe ku visit izi makampuni. Nikienda America, nikienda wapi ku visit these companies. What will I see? Because home is not so good. But here I'm like, and I ask myself, God, do you really want me to go, go on? Because the reality is, if, if, if I'm a printer, if I have a factory of printing or doing these things, if I have that, if I have this, people have done it before. And people, people are doing it in a better way. You know? And if I bring you to Abraham, it's not like he was the only one who had a piece of land. There are people who had pieces of land that are big. The Egyptians were mighty in their own state. They, they, by that time, they, were, they had figured out a lot of things in history. The Egyptians are considered one of the very advanced people in the earth. They knew most things before even Europeans ever knew them. The Egyptians had... So Abraham was like, okay, that's just another piece of land. And by the way, by that time he's going there, the Canaanites already dwelt in it. So why, you know, why? Wouldn't God just say, hey, Canaanites, you know, I've chosen you. This. But there is a calling unto business that I have. There is a reason. And if I lose focus of that, then I cease to manifest what God has given me. See, there is something that God was doing every single day. If you read the, the, the story of Abraham, God repeats the same promises over and over and over again. Why? Because God wanted him to focus. God wanted him to focus in what he is saying. If we lose the focus on what God is saying, we will not manifest the things that God is calling us to do in our lives. You, we, we, we face circumstances in life and we, we go, ah, but, but God, but God, but God. But the reality is, go back. The Bible says, look back to the rock which you are cut from. Look back to what God has promised you in your life. What does God call you? If you're an hairdresser, there are a lot in town. They do better. Some, some do better. If you're doing photography, there are people who, uh, they take a photo and you say, hey, if you're, you know, there are people who do it better than you, but why you? Go back to, the, to what God has said. If you know why, go back to what God has said. What does God say in your life? What does God say? You're broke, don't lose focus, go back to. You're sick, go back to what God says. Go back to, remind yourself of what God says. If Abraham was not reminded by God, the promises that he has for him, Abraham would quit easily. But every step of the way, God came and God spoke to Abraham. Give me an offering. I will bless your country. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless your descendants. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I believe God said, this is an opportunity for me to come. Because as soon as uh, he, he had departed from, from his brother, then God comes. It was, it, was a, it was a good time. Because God knew, mm, he's pointed up. Huh? Mm -hmm. He might lose faint heart. We're human beings. Tell me which one of you hasn't faint-hearted at the things that God has promised. Hmm? When, when, when the pastors told me I was going to be a pastor, I remember one incident where I went to Pastor Sia's house and me and her were talking. And she looked at me. She was not kind. She said, ah, Sasa, where are more? Sisi, sisi, tusha, tusha kwambia, where are more? Kwa hiyo, where mwenye wa more? You have to remember what God has told you. She told me, go, pray. 
go, speak. She was blunt with her words. And that, that's what I needed at that time. If, if she's like, oh, you know, don't worry. God will speak. If she was like that, then I, I serious. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so I, I, I got it. Another, another person, the good bishop, said a very, very hard statement, which I, I, I said, eh, yaisha. After meeting Pasencia, another day I went to the good bishop, and we were in, somewhere in Milmani City. And he looked at me and said, do you think I made a wrong decision to, to choose you as a pastor? And uh, uh, you know, now I said, <laughs> no, pastor. No, pastor. And he said, listen to me. I am the mouthpiece of God. If I say it, is God has said it. You are the pastor. I said, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did not have, but, but, but before then, I had run. But then from there, then I started saying, okay, now. <laughs> I, I decided to focus at what God is calling me for. Let me tell you back to my story. I, I speak about me. I think I know myself better than any of you know me. I, I have the right. Eh? I reserve that right to know myself better than any human being on earth. I reserve that right. So when I was in class three, I started out doing business. I have loved business ever since I was young. Anybody who knows me knows that me, I love doing these things. I love trading. I love, I love, I, 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 the reason I love it is because I, I believe, I believe you can help a lot of people by owning a supermarket rather than, rather than owning an NGO. That's what I believe. You can, and I don't mean that NGOs are bad. They're good. They have a space in, 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 in the community, right? But I believe if you have a supermarket, you will employ, let's say, let's say like game. It employs, let's say, maybe 100 people, right? One shift in, from this time to this time or there, maybe. Let's say 100 people. I don't know how many people they employ, but let's say you have 100 people. And uh, you pay each and every one of them. And most policies is, for most companies, is that they don't want people to be married in the same organization. So I assume none of them are married. So even if they're cousins, that's okay, but none of them are married. So I'm assuming every, that's 100 families being provided for. Let's say each of them has two children. That's more than 200 people being taken care of. Let's say they have mothers and cousins and aunties and how you have a, you are helping so many people now if you have an NGO you're striving to support one person hmm? and they say oh, tutam, tutam. most NGOs I've worked for an NGO so they are helping that child that child they're helping that child or they're helping that woman that woman hmm? but the reality is if you empower if you have more businesses more factories more people then for some amazing reason Poverty becomes elevated out of the community because people are working and people are earning. And people like what when they earn. If they don't earn, people become, they, they become like drug addicts. Money is a drug. It can, it can destroy your life if you just get it, get it, get it. You will not be able to produce. If every day somebody is feeding you, you will never know how to feed yourself. But if everybody is working, that's the reason I love business. So in class three, I decided I would do business. And I, I remember that day clearly. I remember the time and the season and what I was doing at that particular time. And I have never changed. Now serving God came second because by that time I, I knew Christianity, but I, I really never had God, 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 you know. But all my life, I had maintained the focus. When I grew up, and I understood things. I knew I had to do two things before I say bye-bye. I have to do business like no other. And I have to serve God like no other. And I live by those two things. In all my life, I live by those two things. That's the, that in everything I do, I try to revolve my life around those two things. 
Focus is important for you. Focus in God. Focus in the things that you want to manifest on the earth. Uh, yesterday, the good bishop reminded me and told me, write those things down. Put them somewhere you can see. And, 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 and see them every now and then. So that you can remember and it can be you. <laughs> Amazingly, the same tactic Jacob used when he wanted he wanted uh, the sheep to breed his type, you know. He kept those leaves and he made them in a way that when the sheep goes to drink, w w the area they're mating, what will come out will be his and not Laban's. And God is calling you to focus. Focus on God. Remember, focus on the promises that he has for you. Remember the things he has for you. The things in my life haven't yet come to pass. The things that I'm looking forward to. The things that I pray to God to. And the things I cannot, I can just say, eh, Mungu. pale, pale, pale. The things I dream, I pray, I give for. One day I give, I give money to, I give money to, uh, not this bishop, Bishop Lutwama. And he prayed for me. And the thing that I, I gave money for that day, even to date, it's still mission impossible part you. Five, right? Ghost protocol. Mission impossible. <laughs> but I still believe that if God could bring me all this way, God can take me there. I still maintain the focus. I still look to that place. I still look to the cross of Jesus, what he's done. When I fail, I still look to the blood and say, oh, it speaks a better thing out of me. When I can't make it, I still look to the Holy Spirit to say he will quicken my mortal bodies. When I don't, when I lack, I still look to God. He shall supply all my needs according to his riches. Any time I'm faced with the difficulties, I change my focus to God. Because if I do not focus to God and I focus to the current circumstances of this world, I will fail. And if I fail, I do not fail for myself. I fail my children. I fail my community. I fail my country. I fail a lot of people. There are people waiting for me to write a factory on Tanzania for them to be employed. There's a community waiting for you, for you, just you, to come. Canaan is waiting for you. You, you are the Abraham that will liberate something out of this nation, out of this world. There's a country. Imagine we all in this room were waiting for a Pastor Fred Okello to come all the way from Uganda to bring up the gospel of Christ that we may understand the mysteries in Christ Jesus and understand the calling and the purpose of God in our life and understand the things that God wants to do in us so that we can be established. See, there, there are many people, there are many shops, there are many people in your career but if you stand to follow God, if you stand to believe in the word of God, if you stand to focus on God and not deny anything he says but believe it, if even if you cannot do it, but believe Believe it and put it inside of you and meditate upon it as he said unto Joshua every day and every night and think about it and dream about it and work upon it. You will come to manifest that thing because there is a society waiting for you. There are people waiting to hear your music. There's a group of people who are just waiting for you, for you, you, the way you do your thing, the way you carry yourself, the way you dress up, the way you make up your things. There's a people waiting for you. There's somebody who will never listen to me. They will never. Not because they're bad people, but because they're designed differently. But they will listen to you. The way you laugh, the way you smile, they will listen and they will follow God. There, there are people waiting. This nation is waiting for you. The world is waiting for you. We are called. See, our Father is molding us for better things, for glorious things, for greater things. If not the earth, then heaven, Father in heaven, is waiting for you. Praise Jesus. He's waiting for you to be born again. He's waiting for you in heaven, saying, when, when will my children come? He's waiting so anxiously that when that day you enter the gates of heaven, he will be gloriously, happily waiting to rub off your tears and says, come in, come in and enjoy. Praise Jesus.
there's something I want to I want to share with you before I leave. In the book of Genesis, there's this. Uh, now we I want us to use the amplified classic, the amplified edition. Let's, there's something that God has has shown me when I was. It's only in the amplified. The rest of the versions don't have this word. The rest of the versions don't have this word. I want to read a few verses and I want you to pay attention to them because uh, let's read Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 in, in Amplified. Let's Genesis chapter 1 verse 4. God saw that the light was good, pleasing, useful, and he affirmed and sustained it. Please bear in mind the word sustained, right? And God separated the light, distinguished it from the darkness. Now, uh, this is what I know about the Amplified. If you see words in quotation in these brackets, means that they have added those words, right? So if the word sustain is there, it's within the translation from the original text. Amen? Amen? All right. Let's go to verse 10. Jump to verse 10. So this is the, this is the end of the first day, almost the end of the first day. Let's go to verse 10. Uh, God called the dry land earth and gathering all the waters he called seas and God saw that it was good, pleasing, useful and he affirmed it and sustained it. Let's go to verse 12. That's, that's the second day. Let's go to verse 12. The earth sprouted and abundantly produced vegetation, plants yielding seeds according to their kind and trees bearing fruits with seed in them according to their kind. And God saw that it was good and he affirmed it and sustained it. That is the third day. Let's go to fourth. The, 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 the fourth. Verse 18. Let's go to verse 18. To rule over the day and the night. So you have to go read for your own. Okay? So I'm just reading the verses. To rule over the day and the night. And to separate the light from the darkness. And go so that it was good. And he affirmed and sustained it. Let's go to verse 21. God created the great sea, monsters, and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and he affirmed and sustained it. Let's go to verse uh, 21. 25. Let's go to verse 25. So God made the wild animals of the earth according to their kind and the cattle according to their kind and everything that creeps and crawls on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, pleasing and useful and he affirmed and sustained it. Praise Jesus. Amen. Down there you see, in, you see him creating man. Now these are all different days. Now I think there was one that was after the creation. I think the first day, the second day, there was the verse falls up into the start of the, the, other, the second day, I think. So these were all different days. But at the end of it all, the Bible says, God did what? Sustained it. Sorry, let me have, have him do this. Now, I, 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 first, when this, I, got, I read it a few months ago, so I looked, one day I thought, oh, sustained, sustained, sustained. See, who brought me to read Amplified was Pastor Nzia, because she likes it so much. So one day I was reading it, and I decided to read, my Bible is New King James Version, and I have NIVs and other versions. But then I was reading through my phone, and I thought, mm, let me, let me check the Amplified. And I look, looked at that word, and I thought it was in other translations, but it's, it's not in that other translations. So, but I liked what it stands, it stood for, and where it is positioned in all these words. It got sustained. The definition of sustained, according to uh, uh, probably Oxford or something, but this is just Google. It says, 
strengthen or support physically or mentally. And then the the sub one says bear the weight of an object without breaking or falling. And the number the second translation undergo suffer or something pleasant, especially an injury. The third translation calls to continue for an extended period or without interruption. Please listen to those uh, to those definitions. I'll I'll read again so that just listen and bear in mind the sustaining. The first day God sustained, the second day God sustained, the third day God sustained, the sixth day God God sustained. The first translation, the first de- definition says, strengthen or support physically or mentally. Bear the weight of an object without breaking or falling. Undergo or suffer something unpleasant, especially an injury. Cause to continue for an extended period without interruption. Of, uh, of a performer present a part of character or convu- convu- something. <laughs> convincingly, let me read that word, convincingly. Number four, uphold, affirm, or confirm the justice or validity. You, you have seen those uh, definitions. It is God who sustains everything in your life. It is God who sustains your life. It is him. The Bible speaks of Jesus. If you read this definition, is the second definition says, uh, undergo or suffer. It is Jesus, the Lamb of God, that was slain before the what? The foundations of the earth. Means Jesus suffered for every one of us before even we came to be. Praise Jesus. God is the one who sustains your life. He is your father. He goes through pain that you cannot bear. He did it for you. What you think it is impossible, I want to refute that and say it is possible. What you think is hard, the father will mold you to fit to what he has called you for. The plans of God in your life are irrefutable. Nothing can change what God has said upon your life. Why? Because he has called you, he said it, and that's final. It is unchangeable. It cannot change. It cannot bend. It, it will never change shape or anything. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still doing. We call him the potter. He's still molding. He's still changing. He's still making you. You might have flaws right now. But I want you to have faith. Maintain the focus. Remember what the promises of the Lord are in your life. And know that the Father is molding you. Because the Father has molded me to a person that I am today. It is not by mighty. It is not by power. There is nowhere in my life I can say I am uh, the author of all this. But I look to what God has done. And I know that he can do the same to your life. Because he is God. Not because he is James. Not because he is Paul, no, he is God, and that's final. No man can change what he has said upon your life. Nothing can change the things that God has called upon your life. Circumstance cannot, because even the earth on its own is sustained by the word of God. Nothing can change what God has called out of you. Let me tell you something. Circumstance has nothing on you. Uh, uh, Being broke cannot define you. Going through injuries and diseases cannot do anything to you. You will go through the fire, you will come out a-okay. You will go through barrenness, you will come out with a lot of children. You will go through broken state, you will come out fixed and repaired because the working of God has not ended. The working of the Lord has not ended. God is still shaping you as he's still shaping me. God is still doing a miracle and his promises have not yet passed. We still have heaven to go to but before we go to heaven we shall declare the glories of the Lord in the land of the living. This land will know that I am the son of God. That my father his name is enough for me. That every time I go through the chambers to talk to my father. When my father is with me, I cannot fail. I heard a preacher say that if you're with God, you cannot fail. And I would like to tell you, if you're with God, you cannot fail. You might fall down, but you will rise again. Because God works in you, and he will not leave you. He calls you his co-workmanship. You cannot fail. There is nowhere in his definition of you that includes failure, that includes unable, 
able. You are able. You are a victor. The Bible amazingly calls you more than a conqueror, more than a victor. Why? Because you're not even worthy of being a victor. You have passed that level to a level that you're called more than a victor. That if I walk, I'm blessed. When I rise, I'm blessed. When I'm in, I'm blessed. When I'm down, I'm blessed. Everywhere I go, I'm blessed. I am better. The things that God has called upon your life, believe me, it is possible. My father is molding me, and I believe he's molding you. You cannot fail. He sustained the earth. He sustained everything, everything. The Bible says the whole world moves. In him we have our being. See, if I fall to the right, Jesus is with me. If I'm going through a bad time, Jesus is with me. See, I'm not alone. That's why, that's why David says, he said, he said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I fear no evil because God is with me. My brother, my sister, it does not matter where you are in life. It does not matter what you do in life. It, but the promises. But what God said. What does the Lord say? Are you beautiful? Yes, you will always be beautiful. Are you blessed? Yes, you will always be blessed. Because that's what God says. Are you rich? Yes, that's what God says. God says I am rich. Why? Because God, Jesus Christ, became poor for my sake that I may be rich. I am not poor. My nation is not poor because I'm in it. My people are not poor because I'm here. Nothing of me shall fail because I'm here. As long as I live, I surely, as long as I will live and I stand on the Lord, God's word will not fail me. See, David had children. And when he had children, God made a promise unto David. He said, I will never leave anyone, one of you, if there will always be a child in your throne. Your descendants will always, there will always be one out of you. And let me tell you something. When David died, Solomon came. Solomon was a wise man. But in the end of his days, he sinned against the Lord because of the many women he had married. And when he sinned against the Lord, the child who followed came and sinned, and the other one came and sinned, and the other one. There was one there somewhere who did not sin, but most of them did. And God took her with the kingdom of Israel and gave it to somebody else. And But God... <laughs> But God did what? Remembered his word. But God remembered his word and kept Jerusalem, the chosen city of the Lord, the heartbeat of God, if you'd like to call it, to David. Praise Jesus. And Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah, was begot under that. Praise the Lord Jesus. See, God, this word of the Lord, this Bible, as long as it says something upon my life, then shall I be. Praise the Lord Jesus. As long as the word of God says that I am blessed, I am blessed. My father mold me in this standard. My father teaches me in this standard. That I hear his words in this standard. That I will not fail in life. Why? Because God surely is with me. It does not matter where you are. It does not matter what you've gone through. As long as you believe. In the word of God, maintain the focus. Keep reminding yourself of what he has done. There is one day you shall look back and laugh like you just did. At what the Lord has done. He's a good God. He's faithful. He's faithful. The devil is always playing like he's, he's winning, but God has never failed. He has never failed. Believe in him today. Amen.